We're going to talk 2026. Lots of things happening, both on the competitor side and the government side. And uh, Tesla's 2026 is going to be pretty exciting. I know you have been saying that. We've all been as well. So this guy put down 2026 will mark another milestone in Tesla's growth journey. First, you got FZ version 15 unsupervised. <laughs> version 15, we're at version 14.2, maybe go to 14.3 some point. Uh, at some point, it'll be version 15 and it'll be unsupervised. Large scale expansion robo taxis with our safety drivers. We reported that at last show yesterday. Finalization and production of Optimus. And then, of course, energy and deliveries of vehicles will still to continue to pump. Uh, before we get going with some of our news here, what's your thoughts on? What to expect with 2026? I think 2026 will be a very important year for Tesla. I think it will be 2020 level importance, maybe even more important. Because after these five years of waiting and going sideways a little bit, and Tesla transitioning from a car company into a robotics and AI company, we are now, I think at the moment, or getting close to the point where we reap the benefits of this and go into the true next growth phase. Because as you know, so far, we have been seen uh, shrinking uh, margins and revenues, right from 2023 to 2024. And then from 2024 to this year, it was a little downhill less than before the year. But I think this is all in preparation of something very huge of rolling out autonomy. I think also sooner than people think rolling out Optimus, I think that might happen next year. And autonomy definitely happening, energy continuing to kind of explode that business. And there's no reason to believe this is slowing down. I think it's accelerating. And I think one thing that we might all overlook a little bit, even though it's obvious, is the immediate impact on car sales through the FST situation. I think that's kind of the overlooked driver on a very tactical level. If you see all that stuff being rolled out globally now, FSD mm -hmm. and RoboTaxi, there are probably vastly greater effects on sales of the core business than people anticipate. Because we underestimate the effects on the general population, right? On the normies who have never heard of anything. And suddenly they see these self-driving cars and they literally have never heard of them. And then everyone is raving about them in their countries, uh, the press. And that will put just on a pure marketing level, Tesla totally on the agenda also for new car sales. So I think they will win on a very broad front on all, in all of the above categories, but also in the most important tactical category, which is just car sales. I think that's a little bit under, underestimated as an additional booster. And then of course we have small, big, small things like a Tesla Semi also getting into scale next year. So I think it's going to be very exciting with tons of tailwinds on top of the two central attack vectors, which is RoboTaxi and Optimus. And they will be fully deployed next year, I think, into attack mode. So yeah, I think it's going to be a very exciting year. Uh, two questions I want to ask you, Joe. So first is Tesla's AI RoboTaxi. Is it something that the public and the investor public has recognized now that is works? And then B, do you think that, do they recognize that Tesla's real world AI is different than better than everyone else out there, including the Mag 7s, including the competitors like Waymo and these other, like I'll, I'll be talking about Mercedes having their own robo taxi program. Do people really understand that they're different, that they're that much better? I would say in order to truly understand the opportunity that Tesla has in front of it, you need to understand three things. Some more things, but the three core things. Number one, it works. And I think that is now coming, at least on the RoboTaxi side, not on the Optimus side yet. But on the RoboTaxi side, I think that people are coming around now. There's like, maybe this just works. Okay. The next big thing they have to understand the competitive landscape. And there the answer is clearly no, they do not understand that. Clearly to you though. I mean, I'm talking about the general investor public. Yeah, I mean, it's clear to me, to the general public, it's for sure not clear that there is no competition. They think, oh, Mercedes, they have now self-driving. Oh, Xiaomi. Oh, BYD, the God's Eye or something. Oh, Waymo. They think these are competitors. That is a complete lack of understanding of technology, of investment, of momentum, 
that is saying that's like saying you know someone produces bicycles and you have spacex and what if they figure out how to get the bicycles to the moon it's like no they will not figure that out it's stupid so but you know you need to understand that and then the third thing they need to understand in order to truly value tesla you know accordingly you know accurately for the future is to understand the opportunity the size of the opportunity that is independent of the competition and i think that's also something where people completely don't understand what it means they don't understand what it means to have a 70 cents per mile global autonomous transportation infrastructure they don't understand it's way beyond ride sharing it's about a new infrastructure of transport of humans and goods it's about covering entire states not just cities with this autonomous infrastructure it's about removing the entire automotive industry from the map it's about changing public transport and it's about unlocking a huge new blue ocean of startups and innovation on that capability so this is multiple tens of trillions of opportunity and i think people just think it's way it's it's uber it's 90 billion or something so people get the term completely wrong because they compare it with existing verticals. This is not an existing vertical. It's a complete mm. new unlock of a global, super important infrastructure. In the competitive side, yeah, I, I think people just don't understand how this works. Like, I mean, do we think Elon is just Harry Potter and he just does a magic wand and then these cars drive themselves? No. There's a massive effort, a massive build out. There's cortex, there's billions of miles, there's all kinds of crazy things. There are 7 million cars driving around every day, hundreds of miles to collect this data. You can't just do this stuff. So if Mercedes says, oh, let's put 0.001% of the effort into this and then be a competitor. It's like, no, you just have to multiply total miles times total compute times talent times time already invested. And then you have your number and then compare them. And everyone is like hundreds of times or thousands of times smaller than Tesla. That's why it doesn't work. People don't use that times compute. <laughs> they don't They don't bother to ask, do they have an AI data center or not? It doesn't compute, um, no pun <laughs> So I've got two uh, th thoughts about this. One is it's good, and you've been saying this for a while, that AI has become a part of the you know zeitgeist, right? Consumers, consumers and investors have realized that AI, the MAG-7, everybody who's realized AI is a big thing, it's real and it's here. That helps with people to understand Tesla's an AI company. But, but not even, I mean, what you're saying now, not even that is really true for most people, right? I mean, maybe 10% sure. have I, understood that, more than the who understood it, Tesla, it which is only 1%. But when 90% of people companies, would even push back on that. They would say, oh, AI is a fake. Okay. So work. my point is that if, if other companies are doing it, it helps Tesla to be understood. And then the same thing with Waymo. Waymo is fantastic. Waymo has helped everyone understand. Many, 10% of people realize that robotaxis are actually possibly real. It's actually possibly real. But on the other side, people then confuse and they go, oh, everyone could do it because AI is everybody and they don't realize Tesla's real-world AI, and then they go, oh, Waymo can do it, and Mercedes can do it, everybody can do it.